and antagonizes your testosterone production. It's just, it makes you lazy. I don't, I've never seen a hyper motivated weed smoker, somebody that smokes all day, every day. You got to avoid things that I can't live without this. I can't go to sleep without this. I can't go to work without this. I can't socialize without this. Those are very dangerous traps to get caught in. I can't socialize without alcohol. I used to tell myself that. I can't go to a lot of people. I can't go to sleep without weed. I don't have an appetite if I don't smoke. I can't calm down unless I smoke. You're a slave. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Obsidian Achievement. This is your host, Michael Russin. Thank you for joining me. It is a pleasure to be able to speak with you. Uh, hopefully, you guys have been tuning into the Reels and the YouTube. If you if you don't mind, I mean, you're already here, but if you could also follow me on Instagram, Mike.Russin, uh, and just kind of go through and like and comment on some of the Reels with some of the content that we've covered here. I don't charge anything for doing this yet. I probably, I don't know that I ever will. Um, again, the point of this is to help inspire you, to help you grow. And I was talking about this. So please go to Instagram and, and give me some engagement. That's all I ask. Um, I'm rebuilding accounts after being banned for the fourth time. It's 7.06 PM. I've been up since about 4.45. It's been a long day. I've gotten quite a bit accomplished, uh, throughout the course of today. <clears throat> and, uh, it's just, uh, I feel very much in the zone recently. There's a lot of creative energy flowing. There's a lot of discipline focused effort flowing. I've noticed that my workouts have gotten much crisper for lack of a better word word and much more intense. I've noticed that my God is on my mind throughout the day more than he ever has been before. Um, I've noticed that I've been, it's been easier for me to read and concentrate. Now, all this goes to say is that, and I've just been getting so much done. Uh, I've been ultra productive even. And I think this boils down to a couple of different things. Um, it directly correlates with my relationship with God. What I've noticed, number one, to become ultra productive uh, is my relationship with God. Because what happens is, is when you have a good relationship with the father, you don't carry around as much guilt, right? And I realized that unconsciously, subconsciously for years, um, I had a lot of trouble feeling good about my accomplishments because there was so much guilt associated with how I was living my life, right? I wasn't living life in accordance with God's will. And we don't live to ple a life that's pleasing to God so that we can feel a certain way or be more productive. That is not what I'm saying. I am not a prosperity gospel preacher. And the more that you listen to me, you're going to find out I'm quite the opposite of prosperity gospel. Dude, come and pray. We'll give you a Rolls Royce. Still, God wants you to have a $4 million mansion. Dude, these all, all these guys are going to be in the hottest corner of hell. You're going to see them with their Versace chains and shirts roasting in the hottest corner of hell. I mean, I don't wish that upon them. I hope they repent. I hope they turn around. I hope they turn their lives around. But it's, it's very clear uh, that this is just beyond Ponzi scheme doesn't even begin to encapsulate what these these people are doing. But all that goes to say is this this isn't a you don't get close to God so that you could be more focused. Check out my shirt. Anybody tell me who these guys are? Huh? 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 <laughs> so um, we don't get closer to God so that we could get things out of life. But I've noticed it is a byproduct. I feel much more focused and happier. I'm just a happier person now. And I feel more fulfilled in my day-to-day -day tasks. And the reason why I feel more fulfilled in my day-to-day -day tasks is I think about what it says in Proverbs several times and other places in the Bible where it tells us if we're working and setting our hands to something, we're supposed to do a good job, right? We're supposed to do things thoroughly, and with completeness and with integrity. So every day I try to approach every conversation, every interaction, every uh, everything that I do, even from social media posts now, I've toned down a little bit, but I'm, I'm still gonna be spitting fire and speaking truth. I'm not arguing with people in the comments as much and calling people names. Yeah, so that's, that's a step in the right direction. But I noticed that I feel a lot more fulfillment, even just little things like feeding the birds, cleaning the coop. By the way, I got five more chickens today. 
<laughs> so I'm an absolute, oh, there goes my AI thing. Hold on. There they are following me. Bingo. I got five more birds today. Wyandotte, I think they're called. Uh, they're black and white. They're going to be beautiful hens, but we got five. So, you know, hopefully they all survive. We've never lost a chick. Knock on wood. We've lost three full grown hens. Now two hawks, one, I think, uh, I think it was uh, a fisher cat. Uh, but yeah, you know, even just taking care of my birds, uh, chopping wood, going to the gym, running errands, cooking. I just cooked dinner for my pregnant wife because she was putting our six month old daughter to bed. Uh, just just cooking dinner, something I would have rushed through before to just get done. I felt peace and fulfillment knowing that I was providing my wife, who's carrying my child already after just having my first one six months ago. I felt a lot of peace and fulfillment doing that. So I think first and foremost, if you want to be ultra productive, you need to be in alignment with God's will for your life. That's number one. Number two, uh, cut out alcohol, cut out alcohol, cut out drugs, cut out marijuana, cut out any of that. You know what I'm saying? Anything, if anything, you should be taking nootropics or, you know, if you want to, I did micro dose, uh, psilocybin, the, the funky mushroom for a little bit. I noticed some really good effects from that. Um, I'll do a completely separate episode on micro dosing. Um, I really do believe that there's a lot of different, uh, in terms of depression, anxiety, addiction, uh, all those things I think could be mitigated to some degree with the proper uh, dosage and usage of cyclo. Uh, am I saying that correctly? Psilocybin, psilocybin, the 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 funny mushrooms, you know. Um, and you could get them properly microdosed. Uh, but it, 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 anyways, that's not the point. The point of this is that you need to cut out drugs and alcohol if you want to be hyper productive. It's that simple. Especially alcohol. Alcohol is the poison that's slowly killing everybody. And the and and the reason why I have such I don't have like a drinking problem. I'm not drinking all day, every day when I drink, but when I do drink, I drink a lot. And I feel like crap for three days now because I'm 31. It's just alcohol is the easy one because it's everywhere. It's the most socially accepted uh, and acceptable. It's at every event. It's at every wedding. It's at every party. It's at every social function. It's at every restaurant. It's at every TV show. It's everywhere. And I became highly suspicious of alcohol when I started to notice that if the, okay. So, and, and I think back to COVID, they closed the churches, they closed the gyms, but they left the bars. Well, not the bars, but they left the liquor stores open. What does that tell you? It, anything that is pushed heavily in media and movies and TV shows and all this other stuff, I'm very leery of because there's an agenda behind it. And I think that if you're drinking a lot of alcohol, I'm not telling you that you got to go completely sober. I wouldn't even consider myself uh, completely abstaining. You know, if I have a wedding to go to here in the fall, I'm going to have a few beers uh, or a whiskey. But um, what I am telling you is that drinking every night, even if it's one glass of wine, drinking a couple of times a week or even drinking once weekly uh, is having detrimental effects. And Andrew Huberman, who's uh, if you don't want to take it from me, take it from him. Neuroscientist. Uh, Huberman, very good person to listen to if you're trying to optimize your health. He has his own podcast. He's been on a lot of different other podcasts, but you need to cut alcohol out of your life. And then smoking marijuana every day. I don't smoke. I haven't smoked since I was really a teenager, I guess a couple of times in my early 20s. It freaks me out. I get super paranoid. That's not my poison. But marijuana is also uh, detrimental, extremely detrimental, especially for men. It, it, it antagonizes your testosterone production. Uh, it's just, it makes you lazy. I don't, I don't, I've never seen a hyper motivated weed smoker, somebody that smokes all day, every day. Again, if uh, you got to avoid things that I can't live without this, I can't go to sleep without this. I can't go to work without this. I can't socialize without this. Those things, those are very dangerous traps to get caught in. I can't socialize without alcohol. I used to tell myself that I can't, I can't go to a lot of people I hear. Them, I can't go to sleep without weed. I don't have an appetite if I don't smoke. I can't calm down unless I smoke. You're a slave to a plant. You're a slave to a liquid that doesn't even taste good. If it's alcohol, you're a slave. You know, I was Ben Greenfield, who's also a really good health nut, uh, had posted on his Instagram about, and I struggled with benzos uh, years ago, years ago, years ago. I was on Xanax. 
and it absolutely wreaked havoc on my mind. Absolutely wreaked havoc on my mind. I believe Jordan Peterson also had a long battle uh, with Benzos as well. And Ben Greenfield, that's my alarm to make sure that I take care of the chicken coop, and I already did, uh, had a schedule. Ben Greenfield posted about benzos and how dangerous they are and how addictive they are. Very obvious things that could do, uh, they, you know, benzos can do severe long-term damage. It took me, when I came off of Xanax, cold turkey, I was taking, I don't know, I was chewing four to five bars a day. I think those are, what, four milligrams, unless you got the hulks, those were eights. I don't know. I was chewing anywhere from 20 or 2012 to 24 milligrams of Xanax a day. And when I came off of it, I would never advise this is not medical advice. This is you could die from this. Uh, but when I came off Xanax, I was catatonic for three or four days. I sat on our couch. When I, when I say for three or four days, I mean night through day through night, like 24 hours three days, three, four days in a row. I sat on our couch in our townhouse in Wexford, uh, Pennsylvania, and stared at the TV, not watching TV, staring through the TV all day and all night for three or four days straight. I didn't leave the house. I barely ate. I think I lost about 15 pounds, uh, lots of excessive sweating. Uh, my head was, pal it was like this weird, I was having vis some visual hallucinations. And just the worst anxiety that you could ever possibly imagine having in your life. Once I went through the withdrawal, three or four days, cold turkey, uh, I haven't really touched it since at all. I think I took one once before a flight. Um, I try to stay away from it. But once I went through the hardcore withdrawal, it took me about a year to feel normal. I'm not kidding. It took me about 12. So before you take any benzos, you need to ask, you need to really ask yourself. Is this worth a year of my life of not feeling like myself? Plus all the years you're on it, you know, they wipe your memory. There's entire weeks and months. I don't remember. I'll see pictures of me at a party or an event or something for work. I don't remember being there because it's, you know, it's, it's just very, it's very dangerous. It's very, it's a very dangerous drug. It's a very dangerous drug. I only ever took it at night, you know? So, um, I didn't really take it during the day at all. Cause I noticed it dulled me and I had to be sharp, but typically right around eight or nine o'clock at night, you know, is when I would usually take it. And, uh, you know, it's just like after, you know, my wife jokes all the time that I didn't remember anything from eight o'clock at night until I woke up. You know what I mean? We could have whole conversations. I could read a book. I wouldn't remember it. It's not good, but it's interesting. The point of all that is that Ben Greenfield, went after benzos and it's crazy how fanatically people defend their big pharma drugs. You should have seen this guy's comment section. Just people were roiling with rage that he was talking about their precious benzos. You don't know what it's like to be depressed. You don't know these are, these are good. This is dangerous advice you're giving all this stuff. That's everybody's go-to. That's every weak, soft, pitiful persons uh go to is that's dangerous right words like that are dangerous thinking like that is dangerous saying that is dangerous that post is dangerous 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 shut up shut up life is dangerous the world is dangerous everything is dangerous quiet your little safety bubble mouth and move on from it i hate hearing that i hate hearing the it's dangerous more than anything safety first that's dangerous mike you can't say that's a dangerous way to think you don't know what real danger is. <laughs> you have no idea what real danger is because you wouldn't be saying that words are dangerous. I can tell you that much right now. That's all just that thing speak. You know what I'm saying? People are idiots, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. People are funny, but people were really defending their benzos. And it's funny how hard, you know, you talk, tell a weed person that they're addicted. There's memes about it. You tell a weed person that they're addicted to weed and it's a whole. So if you need a substance to do something, you are an addict and it's, it's, it's pitiful. It's pitiful. And I'm coming right. I was in the same circumstance a couple of years ago, man. I was, I was right there with you. I call myself back then pitiful, you know, but if you need something to function a certain way, you've got a problem. You've got a major problem. So get off the booze, get off the pills, Get off the whatever it is that you're doing, the weed, whatever it is, 
and you will be a thousand percent sharper than you are right now. Thousand percent. Okay. Um, next thing. Next thing is your diet. Your diet. If your diet isn't on point, I'm telling you right now, you're going to struggle majorly. If you're eating cupcakes, and it's not even the obvious stuff. I, I shouldn't even say that anymore. A lot of people think that they're eating healthy and they're still eating garbage. You're eating red dye. You're eating processed foods. You're eating whole grains. Whole grains are trash. Okay. All this stuff that they tell you is healthy is all garbage. They don't want you to be healthy. How people will defend and they defend this shit food. Pardon my French. The same way they defend their benzos because it's easy, it's accessible, it's comfortable, and it makes them feel like they're doing the right thing. And they don't want to confront the fact that they've been lied to their entire existence. They've been lied to. If if the government says it and the FDA says it in this organization and these three letters and these three letters, any of them say that something's good for you, it's probably the it's probably not good for you at all. Flip flop it. They say something's not good for you. It's probably good for you. Eggs, raw milk, raw butter, red meat, all of this stuff that they're trying to tell people is cancer carcinogenic, cancer causing. You'll die if you have too many eggs. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to take take any vegan, any take anybody who does a traditional diet and match them up against me. I'll go blood work. I'll go physical fitness. I'll do whatever you want. Mental acuity, IQ test. I'll smash you. Smash. Because you've been putting poison in your brain for years. And I've just been fueled with stuff that we're naturally supposed to be fueled by. We both have Ferraris. You've been putting corn syrup in yours. And I've been putting the best, the best gasoline on the planet in mine. Who do you think is going to win that race? Me. Because I've got the right fuel. It, I could fix so many of all of your anxiety, gastrointestinal issues, this issue, that issue. Everybody's like, it's just normal. It's just normal. Oh, yeah, I wake up and then I, I shit blood and then I puke and... You know, then I have my bowl of oats because my doctor told me that I should have, uh, sorry, Cheerios. Actually, I have my bowl of Cheerios because it's high in fiber, but that's why I poop blood every morning. Uh, it's it's optimal. Uh, and then I, I have a nice tall glass of red dye 40 uh, juice. And then I go and I get my coffee, which is the most processed thing in the freaking world. And I slug that down and I go to work and I have don't worry man I know what you're saying you probably eat unhealthy I have a nice little salad with some seed oil dressing leaves because I apparently I'm a rabbit so I'm going to just eat leaves leaves with seed oils on them and then when I get home the wife cooked up a great this chicken breast you should see this chicken breast it said organic on it there goes my it said organic on it it was bleach white that's healthy, right? That's how they're supposed to look. Bleach white clean. Boom. Throw it on the skillet. No seasoning. Boom. Right down the. And you wonder why you can't sleep. You're full of gas constantly. You're pooping blood. You're puking. I mean, the pooping blood thing's pretty extreme. That's it. That's an over exaggeration. But I'm sure that's some of you. You haven't had a normal bowel movement in 15 years. You're sluggish. You're tired. Your skin, like, look at, see my skin? Other than scars. It's soft. Look at my hair. There is no, I haven't shampooed my hair. I haven't put shampoo in this mane here that I've got going on in three years. You should see the skin. I've got some sunspots. Like if you were to see my skin just over my body, like look at this. Not bad, right? I'm trying to tell y'all something here. I don't know. Maybe my skin's messed up and I just don't know it, but I feel like it's pretty decent, especially my hair. No shampoo. No shampoo in this bad boy for three years. No regular shampoo on my body. It's just tallow. Just tallow and goat milk soap. That's it. It's the only thing I've had. You guys got to stop putting the chemicals on your skin and on your body. Your skin is a mouth. If you wouldn't put it in your mouth, in your pie hole, do not put it on your damn skin. It, people out here lathering themselves up in sunscreen and then they find out that sunscreen causes cancer. Ugh. It's like, why wasn't everybody dying from skin cancer in Egypt? 
out in the sun all day baking in the Middle East. We don't have like, there's not like hieroglyphic paintings of people with lesions all over their body. Maybe a couple. I don't know. I haven't seen them. Like it's our diet. Our diet is causing the cancer. Why is it that the little old grandma who smoked for 40 years and drinks Bud Light every day dies at 98? And the person living in the city who smokes every day gets lung cancer by 35 and dies by 40. What's the difference? The diet, the air, the water, every, all this stuff. You've been lied to. Everything you know is a lie. Let's, let's okay, back to being ultra productive. I'm going to go off the rails. Um, so your food, your diet, okay? Good salt water intake. Make sure you get electrolytes, water, all that stuff. We talked about supplementation the other day. That's it right there. Jesus, no booze or weed, and you fix your diet and work out. Work out regularly. Seven days a week. You don't have to lift weights as hard as I do seven days a week, but you should be active seven days a week. Oh, rest day. What do you mean? Like literally sitting around resting all day? You're not an ultra marathoner. You're not an NFL player. Okay. You work in a cubicle gym. You don't need a rest day. Every day you're, you have a rest life. You don't need a rest day. Get your ass out there and walk for 20 minutes. At least, at least walk for 20 minutes to a half hour. That would be a game changer in and of itself right there. But you should be doing hard weight training three to four days a week. And then the other three to four days a week, you should be walking, stretching, yoga, play any other of that other stuff that you want to do. Okay. But you need to be working out. Maui. Interesting enough that Maui is completely engulfed in flames, right? And all of, it seemed that the fire started around houses that BlackRock had their eyes on buying, but the residents were too stubborn. <laughs> You're crazy, Mike. Conspiracy theorist. How about this? The chief of police handling the situation down there is the same chief of police that was the chief of police in Vegas when that one guy, of course, shot all of those people in that crowd at that concert, the Mandalay Bay or whatever that was. I don't remember the name of the hotel. I think that's what it was. You know, how that one guy got like 50 guns 5,000 rounds of ammunition up 40 flights and all the cameras just were turned off and uh, and it just went away. All these people got shot, killed, and murdered and it just disappeared. Nobody talked about it anymore. Same chief of police down in Maui. But they want you to be healthy. So you should take their health advice. <laughs> if they don't if you know it's just i'm gonna listen i have no intention and, and i'm a happy guy dude i'm a dad i live a very fulfilled life i'm thrilled i do not plan on going skydiving soon i am not going on any deep sea fishing charters i'm not going to be bungee jumping i'm not going to be doing any kind of i'm going to be handling my firearms safely and i certainly do not want to take my own life okay so if i get disappeared if i get suicided <laughs> You guys know here first, I haven't committed any crimes, all right? I've committed no felonies, all right? Every, all my guns are legal. Everything I do is legal. My businesses are legal, all right? So just if they, if they try to nap me up, bro, it's because I'm telling you the truth right now. Just understand that. I'm just saying BlackRock on this, on this YouTube, I guarantee I'm going to, I'm, somebody's going to be watching this behind a screen somewhere in a super encrypted area. I'm telling you, so just, just, just saying that word, name of that company, I'm on a watch list now. It's the truth. They were poking around down there. Maui residents obviously didn't want to sell their homes. The most beautiful Island in the, in, that we have access to pretty much. And, uh, Ooh, whoopsie fire. Oh, and the chief of police handling is the same chief of police that dude that shot that one guy with all those machine guns, right? Shot all those people at that country concert. You know, just keep watching your Netflix shows and eating your seed oils. Keep your mouth shut. Pay your taxes. Go to work. You know, publicly educate your kids. <laughs> just keep on. <laughs> I don't see anything. I didn't see it. I didn't hear any of this. La, 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 la. That's what y'all are doing. It's it. It ain't going to end well for you. You know that NGMI? You, know, you ever seen that? If anybody called the NGMI on the internet, it means not going to make it. When the, when, 
when there's the revolution, you are not going to make it unless you start listening to me. Because it's going to happen at some point. And if it's not you, it's your kids. So you got to prepare your children. That's all. We went down a funky path today, but I got to I got to unload all this stuff on you guys, man, or else I don't know. Just uh, you need to know because I care about you and I love you. All right, let's get it, guys. Talk to you soon. This is Mike Russin signing off from City and Achievement.